Okay, so in our last session, we learned about creating reusable styles by defining the rule sets in a style tag, and then based on the selectors, it get applied on uh, matching elements. Good. And we also learned how the styles are cascading. The default, browser default, then selector based styles, and then inline style in terms of style property. We learned about uh, tag based or tag name based, class based and ID based selector definitions. And it's examples too. Now we have also come to know that there are other types of selectors possible. One of them was combinator selector. Another is attribute selector, then pseudo elements and pseudo classes. Let's take a, a, a shallow dive into each of, each of these uh, types. I'm sorry, my tongue is uh, slipping. OK, so let's take a shallow uh, dive into each of these uh, selector types, starting with combinator selectors. You may feel that it is little too much for you to digest immediately. No worries. You can watch this video later slowly and practice it for the use cases that you have and then it will become much more clearer. This stage, it may look useless also for you that you will not have such situations, but it is going to be useful because in the longer run, you will have requirement for each type of selector that we are discussing today. So don't worry too much about understanding it immediately. If you have a question, definitely ask. But you can always take a look at this video later, step by step, and based on the requirement, you can decide which selector is applicable for your situation. So let's begin with combinator selector. As I said, it is based on a relationship between elements. my mouse. Let's take this example. It's a little complicated uh, HTML structure, which is, a, which is having a div, and then div has a couple of paragraphs, and a section, and a paragraph. Now, section is a new tag, but don't worry. It is just a equivalent of div or span. It's an inline block uh, thing. OK, it's just a <coughs> wrapper. OK, so it has, I'm using it just to introduce one more level. So div, div has multiple elements, p, p, section, and then section has another p. So it's a three level deep hierarchy. And then a couple of p's which are parallel to div. And we will take this example to understand all types of combinator selectors. OK, now I have a situation where I say descendant. Descendant means I have a parent and then <coughs> there are children. I don't worry about the depth. That means immediate child or multi-level child or uh, grandchildren. So for example, here div is a parent which has nested elements. These two does not have nested elements. So we'll focus on this part for now. Div and then a second level p, second level p, and this is third level p. Now I want to define a tag, uh, a style which is applicable to any p which is in the hierarchy of div. That's the situation. Then that type of relationship based selector is called descendant selector. And how do we do that? Pretty simple. I say div space p. Remember the sequence and remember a space in the middle. So I'm using multiple <clears throat> simple selectors like tag name based selectors, but instead of using comma, I'm using space here. If I would have used comma, it will be interpreted very differently. What will happen? The background color yellow, this style will get applied to div as well as p. Any div, any p, if it is comma separated. But if it is a space separated, it means any p which is inside a div. Okay? any p which is inside a div. So not other p's, but any p which is inside a div. What level depth? It does not matter. So space indicates descendant relationship. Second is 
child selector that means immediate child so for that the relationship is established using a greater than sign space means any level deep and greater than means immediate child so if i am you interested in applying certain style only on this these two p's but not in the second level p then i will use the child selector because these p are immediate child of dev but this is a second level child of this dev because it has a parent section so if i am defining a style something like this then what will happen this background yellow will be applied on these two but this will not have it and of course these are not at all considered because these are not in the hierarchy of div all right now so this is the uh, hierarchy uh, in terms of parent child now the relationship can be at the sibling level too and i said adjacent sibling adjacent sibling is indicated by plus sign so first plus second and so second is the candidate which will get the style applied but in relation to the first and if i have separated them by a plus like this i say div plus p means div is div and p are at the same level so not this p because this is a child of div so these are not at the same level but this div and this p and this p these three are at the same level and i say div plus p means immediate sibling immediate means immediately before or immediately after this div okay same level but no diff distance nothing else in the middle that is the situation when we say adjacent sibling okay so div plus p means only this p will get yellow color neither of these p nor the last p fine so plus will make it happen like that and the last relationship is well sibling any sibling so any level i don't mind uh, whether there is something in the middle or not between the tags so i said well general sibling that means all of the siblings of div which are p so for that i am using this wave sign this is also called tidal and you can find it uh, on your keyboard um, somewhere near escape so carefully watch your uh, keyboard and if you find a key which is having this sign that is what you will have to use so it's it's called wave sign it is called tidal sign so tidal is the connector a relationship establishing uh, uh, notation between the siblings okay so plus and tidal is for sibling relationship and space and greater than sign is for parent child relationship let's see this through an example so before going into the pseudo selectors let's jump into our examples and we will see how it works so let me see if i have this example not this one yeah so this is my example and so i have the same exact uh, H, uh, html construct which is having div t with p p and a section and section as p and the couple of p's i have a extra that we'll see later second okay so now i have some styles defined and these styles are right now commented so that's another interesting thing that you can think of what is the way to comment a bunch of styles that you have defined or anything which is to be commented less than uh, sorry 
slash star star slash anything which is put up inside slash star star slash inside the style tag inside this is applicable only inside the style tag slash star star slash that will be considered as commented out section while in html you had a different way plain html you had a different way less than exclamation sign minus minus and then minus minus greater than so that's the way to comment out something but here i have it in this way okay so now let us see how the page appears right now and then we will start understanding initially there are no styles applied on the paragraphs right everything looks similar now let me start defining the styles so i just took it out and let me make a copy of this and then i will keep changing the relationships and then you will see so i have the first relationship which is like parent child any level okay and let's see how it appears now any level that means all three descendant p irrespective of their depth gets this style now if i say immediate child okay by using this div to p relationship immediate child and then you will see that it gets applied on one and two but three will not get this style because three is the second level descendant right it works as expected then i say plus plus indicates what immediate sibling adjacent sibling so i do this then the styles will disappear from one two three and it will get applied to four and only four because five is not an adjacent sibling of div the, all these three are part of the div this one and these are parallel to div so four will get the style this time and everything else will not get this background style although there are five p's right as expected and instead of plus if i say title that means div and p relationship so p's which are adjacent no any level sibling right plus indicates adjacent title indicates any position sibling not adjacent so in this case four and five both are siblings to div it is not important to remain adjacent so four and five both will get this color good so this is how the relationships based things work now each of these selector can be a complicated selector of its own like we can say it is a class selector it is a it is a id selector or the tag selector right it, and attribute selector so we can apply more, more complex individual uh, selectors and what is happening here is not a relationship between tags only but one selector to another selector so first selector is found and then second selector is found and then the relationship between them and it can be multi level too right so how will i do that for multi level thing say i say a p which is inside a section okay so i say p space section and then immediate child of section which is p now what will happen with this it will find a div which has a section any level and then a p which is immediately inside the section so obviously third one matches this requirements only third one will get this style right so this is how you can have multi level selectors defined separately and then relationship between them and can be very complicated too so here we have three levels relationship a div which has a section and a section which has an immediate child p okay so the style is going to be applied on a p 
but relationship it is three level so p which has a parent immediate parent section and any level parent div if this is the hierarchy then only this style gets applied on a p remember the application of style is on the last matching selector which is p in this case now if i say p dot xyz it indicates a p which has a class xyz right so now what will happen this will disappear again because there is a p but which does not have a class xyz so that will disappear now if i add a thing here suppose this is a p all right and i add another p with class xyz X, Y, Z, right? And then I will have a match. So this paragraph X, Y, Z will get the style, right? So magical. So I can have very, very specific and very complicated definition too, okay? I said P dot X, Y, Z, or I say, well, anything which has a class which is a immediate child of section and X, Y, Z, then also it will remain active because that is on P. But if I define a span instead of P and I say, a span with X, Y, Z, right now it will not get the style because it does not have the class specified as a span as x y z but if i just put it here even this span will get the style so p as well as span because the relationship is a section which has an immediate child with a class x y z so these definitions of selector can be extremely complicated too right so now uh, you define it and you control it. It can be many level deep relationship and it can be a mixture too. So I say uh, div which is uh, a P which is a uh, uh, immediate child and then which has a children which has a child with class X, Y, Z. Now basically which is looking for an immediate uh, sibling P here. And then I say a, any element which has a X, Y, Z. So I do this here. And then you will see paragraph four will have a span and that will get the yellow color. Yes. So <laughs> this is how you can make any kind of relationship. And this is how you allow to imprint interpret so an element which has a class x y z and which is a immediate descendant of a p and then p which is a immediate or adjacent sibling of a div so any such relationship or any element which is matching this entire relationship will get this color thing or this style applied otherwise no it will not get applied. So combinator selector helps you be very, very specific depending on the structure or the hierarchy that you build. OK. Let's go back to our slides. So this is how you understand the combinator. As I said earlier, if it is looking complicated, don't worry. You will have a requirement for such complex structure situations and then you will understand the value that combinator selectors are bringing to you. Okay, so not to worry, uh, just understand that this kind of option is available and then later you can use them when there is a need. Let's get into the third type, which is the which is the uh, attribute selector. Uh, 
we'll come to attribute selector later. Let's uh, look, take a look at the pseudo selectors because that is what is interesting and that is what you will use quite a lot. Attribute selector is the least used selector, but we'll see that example too. Let's talk about pseudo selectors first. So there is a pseudo class selector which works on certain state of an element. So it will not get applied immediately, but if the state of the element changes, then that gets applied. Say so something becomes uh, or captures the focus or the tab is put up inside. Both situation is basically to indicate that it is in focus or you have selected or you, you are moving the mouse over it, something like that. And there are many such states possible. So you can define states um, depending on uh, where you want to have a specific uh, style set. For example, and, and this is how you do it. So you say colon in the class name. That is the extra thing, but it has to be prefixed by a selector because selector is actually identifying the element and then it does not apply the rule immediately, but it waits for that state. So selector is still required because that is how you will identify the element and that with the suffix colon, single colon and the name of the state say anchor tag a colon hover. That is what we will use in the example. And we have seen that earlier uh, where we say a colon hover and then some property say, I, I say change the color or increase the font size or something, right? So this is the general syntax. For example, a hover. When you move the mouse over a link, the color should change to hot pink. Okay, hot pink is a named color. And it will, if this is your situation, if you have a link like this and you move a mouse over this link, then you have this color by default, which is blue. And this is how it will appear when your mouse pointer is near the link. Okay, we'll see this example right away. So let's go back to the same example where we had this uh, anchor tag defined and I had this a hover color hot pink. So let's see the page carefully again. Okay, this is how it is. And by default, this link is blue, fine. But when I move my mouse closer to the link, the color suddenly changes to hot pink. That means whenever the mouse is being hovered or this element matching with selector A, which is of course any element, uh, any anchor element, as soon as the change, the state changes to hover, this uh, style gets applied. But as soon as I come out, the state changes again. It is no more hovering in the hovering state. So the color gets back to its normal style. Right? It is not a permanent style. It is for the particular state. And as soon as the state changes, that applied state specific style is gone. Right? So this is pseudo class. Okay? Pseudo class. Class means the state in this situation. All right. So next is pseudo element and when you have a pseudo element uh, what happens is it selects a portion or a part of the element and applies the style there what is the general convention to be followed you specify the selector again to identify the element and then you show uh, you say this portion or this pseudo element you say uh, first line for example or first letter there are many pseudo elements available predefined. Of course, you will have to use one of those with the selector. But the difference here is there is double colon to be used as a separator, double colon. And there should not be any space in the middle. So selector colon pseudo class, selector double colon pseudo element. An example is this. Say I say P double colon first letter the color should be this, font size should be this. And if I have a p tag, which is like this, 
So of course the P selector will match with it, but pseudo element per selector will do what? It will take first letter Y and it will change the color to red because color hexadecimal color that is given here is for red and then font size will be extra large. So double large uh, than this one. And how will it appear? Something like this, right? You might have seen it on various websites, but you could not have imagined that it is this simple. You don't have to rewrite the P tag. You have to just define a style and then it works, right? This is quite useful. So there are a whole lot of uh, pseudo classes available. This is the big list. You don't have to remember anything, but you have to be aware that such things are possible and you can use them as and when there is a need. And we will use them in our practicals in um, coming days, many a times. Similarly, there are many pseudo elements available. We have seen just one first letter, but there are many, uh, but this is not as big a list as you have for pseudo uh, classes. It is a small list and you can use them quite a lot. Okay. So the last type of selector is attribute selector. Uh, I explained this earlier, but I will now show you through an example. So attribute selector selects the elements based on the presence of attribute or uh, attribute is present with a certain value. How it works? Let's take this example. Anchor tag, which has a href, and another anchor tag, which has a href and target, and another anchor tag, which has a href and a target, but target value is different. Now, if I want to specify uh, different styles on each of them based on the attributes presence or attributes value, how will I do that? I can do it using the attribute selector. And remember the notation. So in each of these, you have to be very careful about the notations or convention that is being followed. The special characters that are being used to indicate the type of selector and how is that done you have a selector so property will always be applicable on a selector you have to have a selector followed by a big bracket and then you specify the name of the property if you are just interested in the presence of the name so if you say something like this a target then apply this that means any anchor tag which has a target will get these styles. So out of three, two of them has the target property set irrespective of the value. So target 